Welcome to Backstage with Kennedy This the show will be your remedy From Toronto spanning across the sea Cool people, lots of laughs This is your favorite podcast Hello and welcome. My name is Kennedy from the Backstage with Kennedy podcast. I got a really cool guest today, uh, Dustin Lindbergh from the Bricktop Blaggers. Uh, they're a really cool Celtic punk band from uh, Orange County, California. Um, a really cool comparison I can make for this band is I feel like they're a little bit of like SNFU for all my Canadian punk fans. I know you know them. Um, mixed with like just some really hard Celtic punk band, uh, punk music. And you know what? That's I really like that stuff. Brings me back to my roots, which is uh, I am Scottish, so uh, having that come down through my blood, um, I love some good, good Celtic music. So, how are you doing today, Dustin? What's up, brother? I'm doing great. You're doing fantastic. Good? That's good to hear. I know we spoke briefly beforehand. You said the weather's beautiful. Um, can't go wrong with Orange County, man. But speak of or- speak of Orange County, a Celtic punk band why did you guys decide that was going to be the route you wanted to go being that you are from california um well actually the band was started by uh uh, a guitar player uh, by the name of greg it was kind of his brainchild and he brought in um uh steve uh our singer and steve is from uh brighton england so we kind of pulled in a lot of people that had uh you know irish and uh english scottish sort of background uh ancestry it was all something we were kind of drawn to so um certainly i think that the uh that the niche is really something that brought us all into it is is just the culture and how rich it is uh and the dedication that people have to it it just makes for such a great experience playing music yeah, I, I can see that. Like, and and one thing about Celtic punk bands that I've really found is they're fun to watch. Um, I mean, I've seen uh, the Mahones from Toronto quite a few times now. Um, obviously, the Dropkick Murphys. Um, I did do a little bit of research on you guys, so um, I have seen a little bit of live sets. Um, from that perspective, do you find that it's much more fun to be in a band like this live? opposed to like an av- like your average punk band because the music is a lot about partying and uh, celebration and such? Um, it, it, there is some truth to that. I think it's a little bit different um, only because uh, our demographic tends to skew a little bit older. And when I was, uh, you know, younger and playing in more, uh, you know, like stricter punk bands, you know, you have the the zeal of youth, as I like to call it, where you've got, you know, a lot of elbows and dancing and uh, moshing and things like that, where you don't really get that so much with this music. But it's still, uh, you know, you'll get people come out of the crowd and just start uh, clogging, you know, uh, like Irish traditional dancing. And it's just a riot, you know, it's just so much fun. So it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but still, for me, I get the same like level of satisfaction out of it. Absolutely. So, um, do you guys tour a lot? Like, is that is that something that generally not during COVID you would be doing consistently? Um, we don't really tour in the traditional sense. We uh, we do jump out of town for uh, the occasional festival or show. Uh, you know, for example, we flew out a few years ago to Chicago. Uh, to play a show on St. Patrick's Day with the Tossers. Um, you know, we'll jump out to Arizona once in a while. Um, but uh, we've kicked around some ideas of doing some West Coast tours or, or trying to get around, but it's uh, it's difficult logistically with uh, as many people. Well, I guess we're at five now, but in the past we were at seven people, so you can imagine the scheduling nightmare that that can be. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. All the pieces, I, I completely get it. I got um, some friends in a couple ska bands, actually the band that I'm wearing is hoodie right now, the Filthy Radicals, and they got so many people in their band that it's like, I it blows my mind that they can even just get to a practice together. 
because it's so many people, you got to get on the same schedule, right? It's, yeah, it's absolutely. It's wild. So, so you have this new song denial. Um, it just came out. Um, what, what should people be expecting of it if they haven't heard it already? And, um, where can they find that, uh, that song? Um, well, they can pick it up on really any of the places that we have our music out there. It's all on, uh, uh, our website or Spotify. Um, what they can expect is they can expect something that's, a it's, it's a little harder. It's, uh, we're going in a little bit more of a, a progressive direction with it. Um, one of the longstanding goals that, uh, the Bricktop Laggers has had is, to really kind of try to bring those traditional Irish uh, elements, those tunes and those instruments into like a more modern, uh, you know, bass, if you will. Um, so, uh, you know, punk was one of the natural places for that type of music to go. Basically, all you did was speed up the tempo, you know, and boom, you took a traditional Irish tune and turned it into a punk song. So, you know, we were doing that for a while, and now we're just sort of bringing in some of our other influences that we have and taking it in a little bit more of a progressive direction. So um, if you listened to our first album and then went and, and uh, queued up Denial, you know, you're going to see that we're definitely uh, evolving into, into something a little a little harder. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Um, I, I went through a bunch of your songs, and then I did listen to Denial, and I was like, wow, this is actually more hard than I expected out of the other stuff. It, it, it's um, a little less melodic, more in your face. Um, yeah, and I enjoy that. So, um, you know, aggressive is good. Aggressive is good sometimes. And if you portray it in the right way, it can be a, a beautiful thing. Um, Absolutely. So obviously, uh, venues are struggling right now. Um, so what I'm liking to do these days is whoever I'm talking to from wherever they're from, um, I like to ask them what their favorite venue is um, in their local area and um, a great memory that they have from that venue. Uh, because at the end of the day, these venues are a big part of keeping the music uh, scene alive and well. Um, so yeah, yeah. What, what, what can you tell me about your favorite venue? Uh, well, uh, I would have to say that as far as venue shows go, uh, uh, my personal favorite is the House of Blues. Um, now I'm separating the venue from a pub show. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, my favorite pub to play at is got to be the Shamrock out in uh, Murrieta. They're uh, a fantastic group of guys. Um, you know, they wanted to have us come and play their grand opening. Uh, scheduling didn't work out that way. We played their second night open, uh, and we have played there hundreds of times. It's always a great crowd, uh, great scene out there, lots of support for Irish music and uh, Irish tradition, because they do more than just, you know, have, uh, you know, these Irish punk bands in. But uh, House of Blues has is, is got to be my favorite venue. Um, and let's see, probably... One of my favorite uh, memories from uh, playing there is the way that we would actually get a little bit more theatrical with our with our stage show. We've had uh, groups of pipers come out and play. We've had dancers come out. Uh, we had a drum line on one of our uh, shows that we played there. We played there probably twice a year while they were doing this. Uh, uh, they would do a St. Patrick's show and then a halfway to St. Patty's Day. And they did that for about three or four years. And, uh, you know, every year we were trying to top ourselves with what can we bring out this time, you know, to kind of uh, make it interesting. And, um, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's got to be my number one. I feel you. I feel you. There's, um, there's a band from uh, the the little suburb of Toronto, Burlington, where I'm born and raised. Um, and there was a band by the name of the Tartan Terrors. And uh, one thing I loved about them, I actually like learned how to act and stuff in like one of their, um, like their camps and like their agency. And uh, one thing I loved about them was they did acting, they did dancing, and they actually were a good band as well. 
and they kind of bridge them all together. And I feel like that's one thing that the Celtic fans do very, very well um, because they try to make it fun and interesting. Like you're not just going to a show, you're going to an event, you're going to see something you've never seen before. Right. I, and yeah. I love that. I love that. I'm sure you guys are the same way when, uh, when you do perform, there is some sort of theatrics um, and entertainment involved with it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of my one of my personal favorite bands is uh, Tool, yeah. and uh, for years you never even saw those guys. You know, when they first were out in the '90s, they stayed out of the limelight. They stayed in the dark, really, on stage. You know, they would light up the uh, Adam Jones, the guitar player. Uh, they had Danny Carey, the drummer, more out to the front. But Maynard hid in the shadows all the time, and they really pushed the music. And then, of course, the visual. If you've ever seen them live, the visual show is just outstanding. Um, I've seen them with uh, the aerial performers where they're uh, up on uh, you know ropes and, and doing all kinds of you know twists and flips and shit like that up in the air, uh, like Cirque du Soleil style. And for me, that just makes it, you know, I... It's nice to see the musicians too, but when they put together the that visual aspect of it, it just puts it over the top into legendary status. So that's kind of what, for me personally, I try to chase that a little bit, bring the art into it, you know, bring in other visual elements to make it more of a, a complete experience, you know? So absolutely. When I, uh, I used to be a hip hop artist and a big thing for me was, I hated when artists would just go up on stage. They'd be like, okay, this is the next song. And they'd play the next song. Now they go, this is yeah. the next. They'd play the next song. I liked the fact that I used to have the weirdest intros. Um, I would have like video game theme songs playing. I'd have like my roommate doing voiceovers to over the PA system. Like it was, it was off the rails. And that was a big thing for me because you want to do something that no one's seen, something different, right? Absolutely. Um, really quick, I do want to throw a little promo in there for uh, my boys, uh, Bar Down Lager. Um, they're a beer in Niagara, Ontario, uh, Canada, and they are awesome. You can order them internationally. You can order them in Canada. Um, just awesome, awesome beer. Uh, they are the current uh, current um, song on uh, the NHL video game. Uh, they are played at all the NHL ho uh, arena games. Um, yeah, so they're, they're wicked. So go get yourself some bar down lager. And uh, we're back to the interview. So how are you doing, man? Um, glad to have you back. Um, one thing I did want to ask you uh, is your, your influences. So obviously you're in the uh, Celtic Punk scene now. This is what you do. Um, you mentioned Tool there briefly. What is your What was your upbringing in music? So obviously punk, but what, what bands really formed you into uh, the musician you are today? Well, uh, a lot of the classic big names, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and Rush, uh, Canadian band there, love right. Rush. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of uh, different musical influences kind of growing up. Um, I, I like all kinds. The Beastie Boys are one of my favorite bands. Um, another group that can transition from hip hop like you were mentioning and then go pick up instruments and become a punk band. I love that about those guys. They, uh, you know, just so talented and amazing. Um, but, uh, man, a, a lot recently I've been into, uh, listening to a lot of lamb of God and muse. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, of course, you know, it goes without saying that I'm very much into Flogging Molly and Dropkick Murphy. I kind of feel a little bit being in a Celtic band saying that's a little cliche because, of course, you know, you're you're into that stuff. That's those are the pioneers of the type of music that we play. So, yeah. you know, when I first got into the band. I, I had to do a lot of studying of their music to really kind of figure out what you know, what it was all about, um, you know, so. Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, you know, ELO, I could, I, you know, just tons. But uh, um, 
certainly metal and punk has its place, you know, in my heart, probably my number one and number two genres of music. Absolutely. I, I get that. I get that. I, and I think I see that as well. Um, just being that you were saying, you know, punk's the background to, to this. Punk is really the background. So I, I like that. Um, so there's been a few people I've interviewed now. Uh, most recently was BJ Jesbera from Mannequin Vanity Records. How is it working with Man uh, Mannequin Vanity Records? Like, uh, is, is it different than like your average label? What's it like working with those guys? Well, they're actually our first label. Uh, for 10 years, we were self, uh, you know, promoted and, and self-funded. Uh, so Denial was really our first opportunity to work with a label. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been fantastic. It's been exactly what I personally felt like we were kind of missing was, you know, uh, not only the, the uh, production element where we go into the studio and we talk, talk about our music and we talk about, you know, structuring things and, and how things are sounding and working with someone that can help you uh, refine that, but also has the network capability to be able to get your music out there in the multiple different media outlets, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, promote it and, and market it. So, and that's what I think really we were missing. So, um, and so far I've just been thrilled with uh, Jake and Mannequin Vanity. They've been uh, fantastic to work with. It's been everything I was hoping it would be. I like to hear. And you worked with an awesome producer on this uh, this new song, Denial, as well. Uh, can you tell the people a little bit about that and what it was like working with him as well? Well, um, funny thing is we actually never got to meet him. We, we did all the work in Jake's studio. Uh, and he got everything uh, sort of put together and then, uh, you know, sent off for mastering. So, um, you know, as far as working with Jake, uh, I can speak about that. He's been fantastic. We were just in the studio actually this last weekend, really bouncing a lot of ideas around, uh, you know, the couple of things that we tweaked a little bit. And uh, we got those rough tracks on Monday and uh i'm just thrilled with them they're 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 coming together great and the, the next iteration of music after uh denial is going to be uh just off the charts i think it's going to be awesome it sounded like there's going to be some more music coming from you guys uh, in the near future i guess hey eh? absolutely yeah that's what i like to hear I'm, I'm really excited for that and i'm excited to hear more of your band um yeah man i, I was i was hooked on you guys since I, I started listening to you the other day um thank you uh melanie k uh for connecting us because uh yeah I, I think you you got a new fan in me that's for sure and uh i i really enjoyed speaking with you man um i'm gonna wrap this up but i appreciate you coming on the podcast like these keep these short and sweet um thank you thank you again dude and you stay safe out there all right thanks i appreciate you having me and uh trying to stay warm up there <laughs> i'll try my best you stay cool all right right on man thank you <laughs>